the advanced version of the answer process within this game. So their king is here and the area around their king is here. Advanced level thinking also here. So how do we get to that point? Do we look to defend a piece down at the back or do we make inroads into charging up towards the king area? The idea behind advanced level answer thinking <coughs> and the whole of the answer process is it's not quick and dirty tactics as we already know so we don't go steaming in there it's the difference between how we then get to smother the king how we then get them to capitulate we still use all the basic um, tools and understandings so just developing the night through still using the strategical removal of pieces from the board but we want to lessen those even more so than in the intermediate level there is that big question mark if it's possible I'm a firm believer because I've been practicing the answer process for quite some time now that it is always possible to do the advanced level type of play so our key focal points as we say targeting this area here but it's not how fast we can get there how efficiently and effectively we can get there so I'm just sitting here looking at the potential maneuvers when we think advanced we think we've got to go and blow them out of the water that is not the um, the thought process smaller piece attacking a higher piece cannot be wrong keeping the basics and then understand when you're if you're basically looking at your own game especially looking at the transition actually surprised they captured there um, oh and they're going really fast so that will help us with this advanced process so understanding in my own head when I'm sort of transitioning between a basic level intermediate level or advanced answer process or am i jumping straight from basic to advanced or am i jumping from intermediate to advanced or am i reverting back from advanced to the uh, basic so it's understanding the tempo and timing of each of those particular concepts key squares as we mentioned are here he's not castled yet we're not castled yet his pawns push through the center big let's just grab here still targeting these areas sorry for the circles but it's part of the tutorial okay so we've got space now around the king area generated by the opponent created by ourselves whichever way whoever wants to take credit for it this is where we're currently at now there's space around this area that we're targeting because we're focused on the advanced level answer process so castling is key smaller piece attacking the higher piece can't be wrong it's attacking one of the key squares there obviously that bishop is just going to get taken off the board straight away don't really see any point in messing about with that let's just grab here opponent is moving so fast but speed does not impress me much we do have this lovely move here they never go for it they push the pawn down here but that then does weaken their area 
around here specifically so that's fine we're still focused on this area here I'm going to push through yep like I said they don't usually take the push past if, it, if this happens but like we said it does give a little bit of an inroad into this particular area doesn't want to exchange his queen so the idea would be to push our pawn here but we could look to develop our bishop out as well so I'm going to bring the bishop or could actually block but I'm looking to be proactive in this area so again targeting one of the key squares and the opponent is just um, automatically reacting so this is the slight difference between the answer process that we've mentioned before in terms of lacking like, the intermediate level the opponent is doing a smaller piece attacking the higher piece that can't be wrong but you have to time these things in at the right moment in the game going to capture the knight so we still want that space around the king area with these key squares here this is what we want so we're, just, we're really making some good inroads into that so castling could be on the cards today just nice steady castling just to um, position and get the rook ready so that's all pretty simple straightforward stuff key squares here as you can see we're not rushing in there like quick and dirty tactics this is advanced level thinking so they've castled themselves but as we can see they do have weak area especially on this diagonal coming across here So challenging this pawn would seem quite appropriate really um, can't really see any problems with that again they could just push down but then we can look to double up on this pawn so I'm going to push here trying to make space to get to these areas here and it's making its way quite nicely so it does capture so that's nice diagonal working towards their king as we mentioned bringing the queen here putting pressure onto their king works out quite nicely can grab the pawn as well at the same time so again it's working on these key areas so we've worked these areas quite nicely with the bishop with our queen so far with the pawns pushing forward making that space making that crucial space for us to focus on So we do have options we can take with the queen or do we want to maintain this diagonal onto this area here with the queen taking with the queen isn't too bad could leave it and just attack his um his queen with the rook just to try and own this file so i think i'll do that smaller piece attacking a higher piece at the appropriate time to again manage key squares yep as you can see we're still maintaining that targeting but advanced level thinking is about trying to swarm the king area as much as possible <clears throat> rather than strateg strategically removing pieces from the board so now the opponents slow down a little bit uh, we can grab the pawn because we still want to maintain control uh, management of this area with the queen so we've got the rook now managing this area queens managing this area so that's not too bad with with like one two yeah that's not too bad that's not too bad got a diagonal got these two here we don't have this one i suppose yeah so that's okay that's a good percentage so he's looking to get rid of our queen somehow knight doesn't have any protection on it which is a uh, it's quite a interesting situation see if he falls asleep 
not going to take because obviously the rook is there but if he lost his mind and maybe moved his rook up so appropriate positioning now we've got a double dose on these key squares here we still got this diagonal here out of the key squares that we wanted which are here and here now it's moved again and it's not protected but we do have like a two on one on this pawn here could also attack the queen to see whether or not they wanted to exchange he could come and defend if he came and defended we probably would look at uh, either because we're owning this same um, file with the rook we could take the queen off the board if he brought his rook across let's go and see if he wants to exchange more pressure towards the king area that's what made me make the full de decision out of that knight could have taken it's a nice position for it because I suppose it's managing one of the key squares it does actually capture okay so it's captured so we're owning the file for a moment so we've got half the time that the opponent's got now they're starting to slow down a little bit which is um, I think a key thing and as we've shown in one of the previous examples this rook on this is quite dangerous now on this back file here now starting to target the key pawn here and it's a basic back rank checkmate thing which I think he's probably going to circumvent by bringing a rook here and then we go here then at least he's, I've only got a single rook on the back file So it's interesting how we've got here. We do still have our knights being able to target this pawn. He could probably bring his knight here to defend the pawn. And we do have the option then of doubling the rook here. Or capturing the pawn here. But I don't really want to release the ownership of this file. So taking there might be wrong because then it just bring his rook here. So the key squares we're managing two at the minute here and we're looking to manage the rest of them probably might not need to uh, manage these ones just manage these ones coming across towards their king but to have that impact of slowing down such a speed merchant uh, there has to be something in it so advanced level thinking is a mindset thing he's actually protecting the pawn protecting the pawn and I did think he was going to bring his knight here to actually protect this pawn so our knight can take this because it's free and now it gives us a bit of ownership on this file here one of the key squares that we mentioned at the early part of the game so it's it's quite um, easy to say oh well it's the it's the same as the basic stuff you know it's the same as the basic answer to chess well not really because the idea now is basically this knight can potentially come here put a check on his king if I wanted to could support the knight could bring the knight here but then his knight takes could bring my rook back to defend it brings his pawn there's options let me see because behind my knight is my pawn so his rook might be able to come down and get that we went something like this and then like this protecting the pawn he drops his pawn smaller piece attacking the higher piece then he actually wins the pawn because the rook would need to come down and take the pawn hmm. yeah. maybe that's not going to work calculation wise advanced calculation you've got to think well am i going to win out in that if i put a check here it's almost like a bit of a nugatory check if you like because the king can come there then i'd have to come yeah so it's not going to work out too well we could support the knight 
could bring the rook back like we said which one is the best one which one in my head it is pressure in the king area advanced level thinking is it pressure in the king area if I go here well and he's got that we still have the knight check on the king again comes here mm. if his pawn drops then we can go back up again defending yeah but we will lose this pawn here don't we so I think the safest thing is to push the pawn here I'm on 4 minutes at the moment but I think these last four minutes are the crucial are the crucial bits. Okay, so I can move a bit speedy now, I think. So I supported the knight. The knight does have the deadly check on the king, so that's something to be mindful of. His knight is stuck on the corner on the on the edge as well, which is not too clever for it. And now our knight is really sort of like managing these squares, the squares that this knight wants to jump to. So he's probably going to have to come out to come back in, you know, to attack our rook. So that's probably a picture that they're probably going to follow. Our key squares, as we mentioned at the beginning, still these squares here. And that's probably what made me plump a little bit more for maintaining the knight here. As the thing is, I didn't really want to give up a pawn though I didn't see a way out of it the knight could have done a merry dance the rook could have supported but we still would have lost this pawn so how then do we get this rook into the game to get onto the back because as again you can see the opponent let's see what the opponent does if they do a move that isn't attacking our king area per se then it's not too much of a threat we have a threat which is this here it's, I think this is a key move so this is why it needed stabilising it it really had to stay there after all that calculation so how do we get this extra piece in I'm not looking at removing pieces from the board I really want to pressure the king area I say I think he's just going to do this and do this so what what do we do if he does do that we can preempt it obviously yeah so if he goes there goes there goes there we know it's coming onto the rook can we not double in any way shape it's almost like the rook is kind of trapped and we need to own this file hmm or do we need to own that file bring it back here because then he can't if he jumps to this square then we can take it so if he goes up we come here to prevent this attack that gives space for our knight to jump here as well so we'll have that square and that square hmm okay four minutes doing a big thing but i think the obvious move is this knight move here because there our concern is this pawn could bring our rook here to support this pawn whilst he's jumping down to attack our rook Then we can come and attack the pot of the knight. He's got some fancy dancing moves though, aren't he? Coming round, attacking the pawn here. 
Mm-hmm. Don't have to skedaddle over here. It's like a delicate operation. Interesting. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'm going to pause the video because the opponent seems to have gone seriously into the tank here. And strange as it may seem, the opponent didn't return to the game. So they left the game. So, okay, that was the advanced answer to chess and doing enough so the opponent capitulates and either leaves the game or resigns so yeah, I was happy with the position I want to have a quick look at the analysis okay so we push through the center bishop came down we supported I'm showing a bit of an advantage already on the gauge bar attacking the bishop capturing straight forward capturing and at this point we set the target area as these key squares here from this point on so all this space around their king seemed a little bit vacant so probably bishop through and computer doesn't like that move captured captured so at this point here now they're a bit they're in advantage it's going to be a draw slight advantage to wipe yep doesn't like that move bishop coming out doesn't like that move capturing doesn't like the capturing either so we've got a defensible rationale for everything that we were doing so like we always say when we do do the evaluations I'm not going to beat myself up just because it's not showing me in favour at all um, unless it can show me a valid reason as to why um, and I'll continue with the answer process as is so we targeted these areas the castle didn't, he didn't like them castling actually and they caught the pawn which gave us an advantage to put the check on the king Put a check on the queen, trying to own the file. Capturing the pawn. Twofold aspect of capturing the pawn though. It's protecting these squares, stopping the knight from getting any activity around here. So it's all fruitful stuff. So every move had a reason, a rationale behind it. I mean, basically the knight doesn't have any protection on. But key thing is, we wanted to manage these squares here out of the ones that we had predicted were weak areas so went for the exchange um, evaluation usually doesn't like queen exchanges does it look at that look at that massive drop it prefers the knight taking the pawn here and for me the rationale was it's not working towards the king area or looking to reduce off a major piece of the board so that we could improve our piece places there but maybe in a sense it probably captures and it is managing this square with the support from the queen i just thought had if i just had thoughts of him bringing his rook here that type of thing and yeah it looked a bit murky for me so going for the exchange, captured, captured, so we're owning the crucial file. Supporting the knight, it seemed to work out okay for us. And that's where it ended, isn't it? Yeah, so there wasn't a massive advantage, it was an advantage, which is good. And we had targeted the key areas, so we got those. And that's how the game ended, in the key areas advanced level thinking although this obviously this isn't showing the full remit of the advanced level thinking but the difference between advanced level and intermediate and um, basic is the advanced level really tries to cut out 
even more of the strategical removal of pieces to take pieces, you know, take pieces off the board. That's the simple difference between the three levels. So you've got your basic one where, yeah, you'll strategically remove uh, anything off the board so long as it gets you in a nice position. Nothing wrong with that concept at all. Then you've got the intermediate level, which then reduces the amount of strategical removals so that you've put more effort into actually looking to either put a check on the king or get a checkmate or smother the area around the king. So then the advanced level, all logical thinking, the advanced level is really reducing down even more the strategical removal of pieces and focusing on how can you smother the king or get a checkmate on the king. But it's not a quick and dirty tactics thing like we showed here. It's whether it comes off or not and you've still got to have in your mind in the advanced level thinking how can i do a strategical move if i if i don't have an attack on the king or the king area how can i make the strategical removal of the piece off the board how can i make that stronger which one out of the ones that i can actually deliver is going to put pressure on the king or the king area that's the difference between each of the levels. You just break it down for yourselves as to understanding what is the different levels. And the, the ultimate goal is checkmate. So anything that puts you towards delivering a checkmate type position is going to be more prioritized than anything else. So the more advanced you get, the quicker you're going to be able to see positions strategies that can put pressure onto the king in a better way than the intermediate or the basic level okay we've got we've got a game high rating player 1780 so hopefully they don't run off because i go for a deep think or something but it is part of the tutorial to be able to talk it through so initially we've got these nice squares here that we can work with let's capture this pawn i think out throughout all of the development that i have done um at each stage whether it's basic intermediate or advanced what i have found yeah you can look at it and go oh i want to go searching for other uh, areas to attack um because i'm in the advanced zone bit like the previous game there where I took my time to try and find a different move to try and attack the king area and then I came back to using a basic move you know which was capturing the knight so those basic things have been done trialed and tested and tested so they are from in my head they they work and they're viable moves so this is why I do do those moves So sometimes you might over overstate the fact that you're in the advanced section. Don't overstate it. Yeah, just basically go with the flow of what you've learned over the years. I do like this move. I do like this move. They don't usually take, but I, I do like it. So just pushing through the center here, looking to focus on this area here just for the meantime just these two little squares i'm not over expanding on anything this has got to be the first person to ever take that pawn for years wow let's capture this like i said they don't usually take they have a push past and stuff so there's there's a reason why they don't take it and I'm, I'm not sure this person person may have fallen foul of the reason why it's not been, it's not taken he's got a passer well a semi passer here so we could attack it could develop our pieces just putting a bit of pressure on the king maybe he drops his pawn we lose tempo bringing the bishop back do, 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 do. let's attack the pawn keep it simple simple direct moves to remove pieces from the ball strategically 
smother the king get checks on the king so the bishops come out now protecting the pawn the bishops not really designed to do that so the knight is now looking to just come here attack this pawn if they're asleep then we, we get like the rook obviously it's a very open thing and it's knights coming to protect and just swing the knight around attacking the bishop bishop doesn't have any protection on it so keeping it simple I don't need to over egg anything the difference comes at the stage where there's a space to actually start attacking the king area it's then what you actually do with that do I sit around here fencing with these pieces or do I actually go full on out to actually smother the king and the king area looks like we've established something at the minute he may go on queenside castle because now he's going to take time to get his bishop out get his knight out he's moved his bishop his bishop's being attacked that's why so he has to move okay so our white square bishop really hasn't got much i don't want to dance too much with this knight active just bishop attacking the knight so we can potentially get castled as well at the same time so keeping all the basics but through the knight is the pawn through the pawn is the knight bishop's protecting there at the minute but his pieces in my heart of hearts look a little bit disheveled because the knight has had to lose a tempo by going back to come back out again and it's not in a position it really wants to be in at the moment it's probably going to come to look to defend okay it's gone queenside castle It's a merry horse of a different colour. So we need to be developing our knight. Nice and steady. As you can see, we're not rushing again. As usual, we, we don't rush to try and blast through. We, we have a focal point, which is these two, these two squares. Even though the king has gone over there, um, these two squares would be the optimal squares for my performance in this particular game so the difference again between the moves is about making moves that really are going to scare your opponent or put some sort of threat on the opponent maybe he's doing it to do this maybe we're castling Maybe we're bringing our bishop out. I, know, I think I'm going to go for <coughs> king safety. <coughs> Notice where all his pieces are. I think I may have mentioned this before uh, in previous games. When all their pieces are on the other side of the board and their poor king is stuck by itself. <coughs> gives you something to aim for. So his knight is wanting to come down here with a single attack, but we can just take that off the board. His rook will probably come steaming down. So that's not a good place for his rook, really. Rooks don't have any place in the center of the board unless it's supported, <coughs> owning a file. So let's shoo you away. Have to go back to whence you came, I suppose. Losing more tempo again. <coughs> Slow, steady build up. <coughs> King's all on its own. Excuse me. <coughs> okay, so it's gone back to whence it came. Slow, even, steady build up of attack process. Knight now attacking the bishop because knights hunt the bishops in our mantra. Making the way towards the king area. All these pieces on the other side of the board away from their king. 
It's a key thing to remember. Sounds simple, but it really is quite key when you look at some of the major games that are played in chess. Um, have a look at where the king is and have a look at where the pieces are and then see who's taking advantage of that and the person who's in advantage on the board is usually taking advantage of the fact that their king is all alone let's brought the bishop down bishops doing something i suppose iron up the king here but again it's like a single attack no team supporting king is all alone we have these two crucial squares that we want to get activated so that will work out quite nicely for us pawn can push on to the bishop here bishop could come out to attack the bishop i think the pawn attacking the bishop is probably better but um, i need to activate the bishop i'll bring the bishop out attacking the bishop don't know about that don't know about that that's again opening up space around his king now so his king is all alone and in my advanced head I'm just thinking well if your king's all alone and it's got no pieces protecting it you're not going to open up the pawns around the king for my pieces to start jumping all over it I mean I've got my bishop here that can put a check on it Ooh, I could go here, put a check on his rook. All sorts of stuff. I'm actually just going to take. I'm going to keep it simple. Pawn takes. I probably can leave that one in my back pocket for now. And develop a rook. Push this pawn up. Push this pawn onto this pawn. He pushes down. There's all sorts of things potentially that could go on here. Which one is going to be the right one? What decisions do I make? The decisions are around putting pressure on the king area. But I don't really want him to escape. There is, there's techniques to doing these types of things and blocking them off. If I go here, then he just runs over to here. Knight's got this pawn, but his king is still there. And there's nothing else supporting. So let's keep that one in the back pocket. I'm going to push onto this pawn here. then look to get the rooks maybe activated here poor knight poor rook I'd even say poor bishop there's three pieces that aren't active in the game it's captured this would be quite nice you know because Bishop does have that, but then it's allowed. It's a bit slow, isn't it? If the rook takes, because the knight has to maneuver somewhere to actually get that off, so it has to come here. But then his knight gets activated, defending the pot. Yeah, that's no good. Let's just take with the pawn. Take with the pawn. We can support this. Oops, support this pawn here it's all by itself so keeping that in the back pocket want to probably get the rook here he's got a dark square bishop got to be mindful now his knight wants to get activated needs to come out doesn't it i have to be mindful you know as well because he could do something funky he could do that couldn't he and then if i take then his rook takes could do things like that yeah so the knight's getting activated I need to support the attack that's potentially coming towards their king area knight does have that as well attacking the king and the rook is attacking a piece that really isn't doing much to it this is the difference i think 
throughout the whole of the you know the advanced bit it's about understanding that well you know your piece you're attacking a piece that maybe doesn't need attacking just bring the ring to rook to support maybe he could have done something more proactive like looking at protection for the king somehow you know so the knights come through uh, da, 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 oops it is he is he looking at coming it's not going there it's not going there it's going here don't really know where he's going with that one okay i'm just going to throw this out now i think it's time okay pressure in the king area my knight's got no support and i want to keep my bishop there so i can't actually take like we said before can't go up there i want to have my space could attack the knight or could bring the knight here attacking the bishop if we brought the knight down his rook could just take our pawn so i'm going to attack the bishop knights hunt the bishops in our mantra that's what helps with our decision making having a mantra does help we're on six minutes they're on 11 so again we're half their time but i like the thought process i like what's going on so we've got the bishop now that is um potentially putting a bit of uh, pressure on the king closing it down smother smothering the king as we would say got potential for this here but it's not really doing much because the king's protecting got a, pa got a passer the bishop's not going to move i don't think because if it moves then it gets taken are we taking it i'm not sure yet if we take whoa he's defending with the knight Defending with the knight. Mm -hmm. His knight has got this. He's not defending, you know. It's a cheeky thing. He's attacking this pawn. He's attacking the pawn. I'm going to have to defend with the king. Yeah, to all intents and purposes, it looked like, oh, protecting the bishop, but no, secretly coming here with a fork, looking for the king and the rook. And the bishop's out. But these are small attacks, they're not actually attacking the king. They're not attacking my king or my king area. Knight's attacking the pawn, but it's not attacking my king or my king area. Bishop's not either, so I can, I can move towards the back. And as you know, this is our, our classical position here of trying to get the back ranker. Yeah, we do have attacks here, here, here. Somehow we'd have to get this rook up to there if we're going to support this attack. Do have this lovely bishop though, managing this area at the moment. He might look to trade down. Our knight's not in a bad position, but it's going to get challenged by this pawn, so... <clears throat> We need to be looking to uh, vacate this area or we're going to be pushed. Okay, so again they're protecting. They're in they're in defense mode for a while. They've been shuffling pieces and not really protecting their king as you can see the king is really all alone i'm feeling really quite sad for their king would have potential for the knight coming here attacking this pawn i think i'll just bring the knight here like i said it's potentially going to get challenged so we might as well move it to somewhere productive again if he moves here with his rook bishop can take or he might look to just challenge the rook and just take the rook off because I've not been able to double. Bishop's attacking. I'm not too sure that that was the right thing because we can just take this pawn here. 
so we're getting closer towards their king area smothering the king because they don't have any of their pieces around their king if you have a look at some of the not even top games you look at um normal games where somebody's gained an advantage in a game usually it is that you know the king hasn't got any protection around it it's nothing magical and that's the answer process you know it's um, putting that pressure on the king or the king area not quick and dirty tactics but as we highlighted from them doing the queen castling they were a little bit home alone but it's how you take advantage of that and I think it's the moves that you make if you make focused moves that put you in the position to be able to smother the king then you're making efficient moves as far as I can see so in this advanced level uh, tutorial it is about spotting those and taking action on those and constantly making inroads into the strategical moves that you do to take pieces off the board allow you to get a better position on the board against their king or their king area and as usual it's not saying this is winning but it feels nice to be able to explain how we got to this position here and how we look to plan to move forward from this position bishop's got a nice thing there but if we can block that off then our rook can get involved but this pawn has not got any protection on so it'd have to be a long drawn out process if we were caring about this pawn might not need the rook to get involved the knight might be able to do its magic from there to there yeah, that's a bit extravagant that Rook does have this pawn here, but I'm not into pawn grabbing for pawn grabbing say does that put any pressure on his king at all? Not really. So they've gone into a deep thing, so I'll pause the Oh and they've made a move. So they've pushed the pawn. They've pushed the pawn. Our idea is to basically pressure the king area as much as possible. So if we can go here if he then goes into the corner then our knight would get a checkmate on him so he's probably going to have to move here which would allow us to take this pawn and gets a check put on him and then if he moves over to this side here we can looks like we can continue to put checks on past pawns want to be pushed as well and that is a key thing so we could push this pawn here which one's going to be better for us I think this one has potential I'm going to run through the move I don't um, let's see how far it goes so we've got a rook here and see he if he goes there then that's an instant checkmate isn't it really because we go here and then that's checkmate so what we're thinking is going to do is when we go here he goes here is it a night move yet again uh, no does the rook just move then if he goes there then maybe the rook comes here takes this pawn does it because the bishop's got the check on so then does he move back again if he moves back to there rook can come back again with a check if he goes there then we can go He could go anywhere really couldn't he could go here attack in this rook or take that pawn hmm. there's something there i'm going to go with that uh, he's obviously seen it so he's that's why he's moved so fast hmm <laughs> I'm probably going to do this wrong I'm going to take like we said here I think this passer is the key we 
because then you won't be able to move and it's a passport so if we go because if we go down he can go here but if we push this pawn up here then he's going to have to take the pawn or he's, he's getting checkmated because he can't go here because the knight is protecting this square so that's the focus you know that's the type of focus we're talking about here the forced moves forced moves on the king that's where we, we put our energies in like they've gone for a deep thing so oh bishops out bishops actually uh, protecting that square attacking the knight at the same time if the rook pushes up if the pawn pushes up is there something else that can be done what can the knight do knight jump here bishop attack the bishop Bishop attacks the bishop, bishop takes, rook takes. Uh, let's attack the bishop. I don't know if I'm doing it right or not, but he's introduced the bishop. I didn't actually put the bishop in the frame here, so might be a longer process. You might just want to get the knight off the board anyway and just take the knight because the knight is covering this square but then if he takes the knight then the rook is still controlling this bit here but I suppose he can still escape can't he yes. I'm on 2 minutes 28 need to move a bit quicker yeah he's just taken the knight Our rook could go here because the bishop now is defending with a check, but then his king can come here. That's annoying, isn't it? I'm going to take. It's still okay. I don't mind a long drawn out process. We're, we're suffocating the king, so we're doing the process right, I think. His rooks are on the wrong side of the board so he may look to exchange one of them off or something like that but it's a bit of a bad situation for them in that sense because it, i just go here wouldn't i and then his king has to come there then we take that rook off the board with no support so it's still looking a bit favorable for us And he's bringing the king across we could go here with the check he moves down then we take a rook or we could push this pawn onto his rook don't want to bring the bishop there because he comes for the, the rook could attack his rook so that his rook makes a decision just blocks the pawn though doesn't he so if we push on to, ooh, no we're not, if we push on, then he comes here, then he's got two on the pawn. He's got two on the pawn. Ah, he's got two on the pawn, but then we go rook here, his rook king has to move here or there, and then we take this rook for free. Okay, let's do that. 1 minute 26 okay pressure but I think it's it's nearly done now actually it's not really nearly done because I still have to do all the work to get a checkmate don't I and he's run damn he's run oh okay right it's a 5 second increment actually I'm just gonna go kamikaze now uh, da, 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 da. this bishop can do something look at that beautiful position there oh another check maybe it's coming down for the bishop it's coming down for the bish oh the bishop could have gone there actually so 
So I've got the check, let's go here. <coughs> and then queen and get one of the rooks off the board. It's a bit te bit testy, but I would expect something like that from you know, 1780, so that's good. It's a good competition. Whoa! I'm going to have to take the higher piece with the lesser piece. And it's getting a bit tense now. I'm going to have to bring the rook here, put a check on Anta. I'll bring this rook down to put a check on. Which one do I do? I need to move fast, I need to move fast. Put this one, check. It goes behind. Uh, it goes behind. Rook can put a check on here. Do I want to do that though? Shall I just go here? Yeah, let's go here. And if he takes the pawn take, and then it's a rook against the knight. And we do have these um, passes on this side. It's not interested in any. Let's just take this rook off the board. And uh, let's just fire this baby up now. Let's go. Is the king fast enough? If I take his knight here, can I do a count? If I take his knight, his king takes. Go. He comes across. We go. Comes across. We. Oh, I don't know. He might be, you know. I'm going to go for a check just in case. I've not got my cover time counting right. <laughs> 52 seconds pressure time now. Let's go. Is he going to contend my rooking? That knight is going to be a bother something. It is five seconds, isn't it? Yeah. So that's the general idea, let's go, still going, general idea, just push these up, we have advantage with a higher piece but his knight can get activated, come here and block the pawn coming up here. Let's go, so his knight comes up, but his knight will get taken so he'll have to come this side, yeah so he's come there. So what we want to do is put a check on the king. And if the king, if the knight takes, then we get queened. But, uh, oh, interesting. You know, I didn't actually see it that way. <laughs> Let's go here. Shame. <laughs> right, fine. No problem at all, though. Let's just keep um, sweating the situation. This, this pawn's doing a nice job. He knows I'm coming down here. Well, pretty obvious stuff. But it's that it's trying to look at that difference, that smallest of differences in advantages. You know, so we're playing like a game is this person's only six points less than me in the rating thing, so just equal. You're playing somebody equal to your standard um what is the difference in being able to gain the advantage it's always the smallest of differences and we're using the advanced answer process to actually get to this position let's go here and it's not saying it's winning but it looks fruitful it's moved his quick knight quick so he's coming down for the pawn um let's go here let's take looking to get that past let's go here what else can he do my king fairly safe-ish should be able to ramp this one up unless he's going to sacrifice he's got his knight he was hoping that that was you know oh, a fork so we're looking to get this baby up and up and up and they've resigned that was a really good game, good demonstration I think of, uh, uh, oh I need to put something in the thing, well played, there we go, yeah good demonstration of advanced answer process.